Islam is a political ideology based on a religion. So this is a political system that we are facing and we must defeat this political system, the, the, the cancerous form of this political system, which is this radical Islam. Today, right now, hundreds of millions of women are treated worse than second class citizens. When you mandate that one category of human beings don't even have the right to show their face, that's apartheid. One it day we can on. have a Muslim majority nation here in Canada, right. right in your face. You say that you want Sharia law to displace Canadian law. That doesn't sound very respectful. In majority, you wouldn't have any other option, my friend. Islam doesn't in endorse gayism. Islam doesn't endorse homosexuality. The gay people are doing is against the commandments of God. Congratulations to Canada on reaching 157 years old. How much longer will we continue to have a country to celebrate? Well, that's what keeps life so interesting these days in Canada. Typically, Canada Day is that one day a year we kick back to reflect on the good fortune of living in a country like this one. But not this year. Before we delve into Canada's woes, we need to shift our focus overseas, to France. Because what's going on over there has a very pertinent effect on our political and social climate. I covered the massive win Marine Le Pen's party scored this week and the resulting leftist riots. Since that upset victory, the global leftist movement is going into absolute meltdown. If the messaging coming from leftists on social media was all you had to go by, you'd swear that the election of folks like Le Pen and Nigel Farage in Britain was the seventh sign of the apocalypse. Talk about a group of people who don't know what they want. They fear the far-right regimes, as the mainstream media likes to call them, because they might bring back what the funny mustache man did to the Jews back in World War II. And yet, simultaneously, these same people applaud the Free Palestine movement for torching synagogues and posting anti-Semitic videos on TikTok. But enough talk about leftists abroad. Time to talk about the many ways in which socialism is sabotaging Canada's economy as well as creating openings for terrorists to get into our country. This year, we've got people posting calls to disregard Canada Day and telling us what a wastebasket this country happens to be. Nice, huh? By the way, the person I got that image from isn't even from Canada. Telling, isn't it? The irony of his anti-Canadian tweet? Well, if you go to the about page of his website, one of the first lines in his bio is the following. And he is a Chinese Canadian first generation immigrant and get this, a humble and grateful guest of this land. Hmm, perhaps something about the words humble and grateful got lost in translation. While he was rage posting about the land he's so humble and grateful to be in, the leftist hordes on Reddit were busy laughing down the Take Back Canada marches, saying that there was basically no turnout. Well, let's take a look at footage from Harrison Faulkner of True North as to just what the turnout was for the Take Back Canada march in Toronto. I don't know, perhaps they're using interpretive mathematics, but that seems like a pretty fair-sized crowd to me. If there's one thing that's made perfectly clear from these protests, it's that Canadians are starting to shake off the fear of being stigmatized as racists and xenophobes. Canada is starting to realize that if you clearly see the damage mass immigration is causing to the economy, the first step is in speaking out about it. It's bad enough that some of the immigrants we have coming into the country disrespect it like the chump who posted this. But at least I can say that guy is doing something constructive for the country, given his line of work. But what about the glut of dim-witted yokels we've been admitting in a desperate attempt to explode our population? Here's an example of what I mean. This week saw a lesbian couple in Halifax being assaulted by a bunch of dudes believed to be of Syrian descent. The group of men started catcalling the couple and making homophobic remarks. When a couple told them to get lost, the, dunner, the dozen or so men beat them bloody. The point of bringing up this incident is that the members of the gay community tend to be defenders of other social causes. For example, just look at groups like Queers for Palestine. You can clearly tell these groups are made up of suburban kids who've never traveled outside of their home provinces, let alone Canada. I know I'll never be able to change a leftist's mind, but perhaps members of the gay community can be reasoned with if they realize their orientation does not mix with extreme religious ideologies. Islam doesn't in endorse gayism. Islam doesn't endorse homosexuality. The gay people are doing is against the commandments of God. 
Having members of the gay community fighting for Islamic rights is like sheep petitioning for wolves to have unfettered access to the farm. This is where Canada has to make a choice. Do you love the way of life we have here? Well, in order to keep it the way it is, you have to accept you can't have your cake and eat it too. Are you gay and want to keep living an openly gay lifestyle in peace and tranquility? Then you can't allow medieval ideologies taking root here. You want full, unencumbered rights for women? Then you can't have a group of people who are pushing for women to completely cover their bodies head to toe in public. So what's your take? Is it time for unpopular but necessary decisions to be made? Sound off in the comments. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.